For Pride Month, which was in June, one of our listeners, Chrissy, set up a fundraiser for Point Foundation, but she's planning to go ahead and leave it up for the rest of 2021. So please join in and donate if you can. The Point Foundation helps LGBTQ plus students achieve their goals of higher education with financial assistance, mentoring, leadership programming, and more. Your generosity helps Point provide scholarships and vital programs to a new generation of LGBTQ plus leaders. If you'd like to donate, go to our Instagram, Who's the Boss Podcast, and the link is in our bio. It's listed as Chrissy's Pride Foundation. Hey, wait your turn! Boy, Sam, you look green. She looked like death. Sam, are you all right? Uh, Sam? Honey, honey, what's wrong? Uh, I think I'm car sick. You walked to the party. I think I'm walk sick. <laughs> I don't think so. Have you been drinking? Just a couple of diet beers. <laughs> oh, Sam. Angel, I'm fine, really. Just don't tell my dad, okay? Honey, <clears throat> this is not something that I can keep from him. Hi, welcome back to A.O. O.A. The Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Tori. I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. Today we're going to cover season five, episode 17. The title is Boozing Buddies. Ah, uh, Boozing Buddies. Yeah. I know what that's a play What is on. it? It's Boozing Buddies. Yes. I right? Think, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I used to love that show. I know. That's, we that's tried to find podcast. that streaming, and we couldn't. That's a, <laughs> how many seasons was that? We like to do shows where we struggle to find the episodes. Right. Yeah, so. yeah. That's our favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Bosom Buddy, I have no idea. Five. I feel like five seasons. Oh, I'm just wow, going to throw that, that out there. Okay. And we're not that's doing that That's a complete guess. I don't know. I'm going to look it up And now, then... But. We couldn't find it streaming anywhere, and I think we actually ended up like finding pirated copies of. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we watched it on some kind of. I found. Uh, yeah. But the joke was on us because they didn't finish the series, so we never saw how it ended. I mean, at some oh, point really? in our life, I don't think we did. Though they didn't have the last few ones, and we were oh, like, "Oh no, that's... we're not oh, going to yeah, get to we see did the watch end." The whole thing. What is? What's wrong with us? I don't know. We um, we're There's dorks. So much TV out there. We're watching all of us. And I know. <laughs> I know, but I mean... Oh, it was only 37 episodes. My God. Oh, really? That's what it says. That's a season and a half. That's what it says. Oh, I had no idea. That's why we plowed through it so fast. Okay, yeah. Oh, we could totally do a podcast on that. There's so much that's wrong about that show now. Season one and two. Okay. All right. Anyway, back to what we were saying. (laughs) This is Boozing Buddies, and it first aired on Tuesday, March 7th. 1989. Mm. So remember that date. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. All right. When Sam comes home drunk, Tony comes down hard. But Sam comes down harder when she sees her dad having a beer with his buddies. That's per- That's like a perfect um, description of this show. It really is. Now let me read what okay. I have. Okay. When, founds- when Tony finds out Samantha let airhead friends take her illegally drinking beer at a frat party... He gives her a sound lecture. For once, firmly second, seconded by Angela, he refuses to cover up the brat's drunken state. However, they commit the error of feeling guilty just for having innocent drinks at home. And Tony's sports fan buddies are not much help in setting the good example. Wow. There's a lot more information there than there was in mine. <laughs> It technically wasn't a frat party, I don't think. I don't think it was. It was either. a high school party That's for sure. That's what I thought. Yeah. This episode was written by Claylene Jones. This is her second and final episode of Who's the Boss. The first one she wrote was Three Teens and a Tony with Adam Carl. Mm. And this is the uh, second one. Okay. When this episode opens, we've got Tony and Jonathan in the kitchen. And Tony is showing Jonathan how to make his famous Maselli chili. Maselli chili. Yes. It's a cute little bonding moment between Tony and Jonathan. So they're shaking some cayenne pepper into the pot 
Jonathan's standing over a pot that he can barely see over. And so the Kai, he, Tony says it's like two shakes of cayenne pepper and then three more for us men. Uh, well, yeah, women can't have no, spicy. No, of course don't. not. No. No. And Only men <laughs> can. <laughs> Only big, big, big manly men can eat the right. chili. Well, Jonathan gets some cayenne pepper in his eyes, and he's like, my eyes are burning. And Tony's like, when your scalp starts to peel, then we know it's ready. Oh, well, all right. Angela, Very Tony. Of course. Angela comes into the kitchen, and she sees Jonathan and Tony cooking. And she's like, oh, look at my guys in here cooking. And Jonathan still has his eyes partially closed. He's like, mom, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and Tony says, we've got a big afternoon planned. Philly, Philly Fingers. Right. Vinny. Yeah. Check. Tiny Tony. No, Tiny Tony. I'm sorry. <laughs> tiny. Who's Tiny Tony? <laughs> so it is tiny, right? Yes, I know we it is tiny. It. When yeah, we, we could watch it. We couldn't remember. We were like, is that tiny tone? or peewee? Tiny yeah, or it is pee-wee. not <laughs> tiny Tony. I want, I want a Tiny Tony now. All right. Um, tiny Tony. Tiny. All right. Comma. Tony. Sorry. Billy, Vinny, Tiny, and then to- Tony. And then Tony. And then he's talking about himself, right? Not Tiny Tony. And then Johnny. Johnny. And Jonathan says, who's Johnny? And I thought that, okay, there was a movie in the 80s that I loved as a kid called Short Circuit. Right. And there's a song that I don't think was made for the movie, but it was in the movie, and it's called Who's Johnny? Yeah. When, uh, did, I, did, did we determine when Short Circuit came out and when Who's Johnny came out? I think Short Circuit came out in 1986. Well, so did Who's Johnny. Oh, so maybe the song was written for that movie then. Yeah, I don't know. It just said it was a single by El DeBarge. Which I totally remember that song. I didn't care yeah. for it. Oh, I liked it. I mean, it's a catchy tune. It's not like, you know, I don't think it's a fantastic piece of music, but it was definitely catchy and it was very popular. And I feel like that phrase, who's Johnny, was kind of popular. So I almost think that that's sort of like a callback to that movie. Yeah, it was probably like anytime someone probably said Johnny, then right. somebody probably like, said, who's, who's Johnny? Because Johnny? that was yeah. like... Like, where's the beef? Or was like when one of Ghostbusters, those anybody was like, well, who are you going to call? Right. Everybody, you always say Ghostbusters. Still to this day. Yes. I still say Ghostbusters at work, even on Zoom meetings. Oh, I'm sure people and they enjoy that. Great. Yeah. yeah they that, I'm sure that they don't call that a dad joke at all. Right. So... John Jonathan says, who's Johnny? And Tony says, you, banana. Then he says to Angela, we still have work to do. Like, <laughs> you know, I know. Like, he, well, he's trying his hardest on Jonathan, but the Angela and yeah. Jonathan shines through at every moment. Just at that moment now, Mona and Samantha come into the kitchen, and they're mid-conversation. Sam's saying, I'm telling you, Mona, Tim Collier was his name? Yeah, I think so. Doesn't even know I'm alive. Mm. And Mona explains to her, that's because you're trying too hard. If you want a man to pay attention to you, you have to completely ignore him. And Sam's like, hmm. And then (laughs) Angela says, well, there are other ways, but you're only 16. I know. Where'd that come from? I know. She even says it. Like, she's like, it just came out. Right. (laughs) It was one of those moments where Angela, like, just like the TNA joke in that one episode where they're going to the PTA meeting. Right. Like, Mona, like, uh, I'm sorry, like, Angela was just out there running around doing whatever. (laughs) Right. Mona makes it seem like. Well, Angela did say that that one guy smiled for a week after yeah. he got out of the back so seat of the car with her. That yeah. I you know, cuz I feel like Mona, I mean Angela is Mona's daughter and she probably grew up with a very open idea of sex. Yeah, and sure. so I don't think she's she's definitely more open. We just she's better at hiding it. She's not so brazen as Mona, but I think she's still probably a little freaky. Sure. And Sam's just staring at her. <laughs> She's like, what, where did that come from? <laughs> and Tony goes, Angela. It's a right. fantastic Angela. It's like a sound drop worthy Angela. Angela. And she says, I'm sorry. It just popped out. And so he's like, all right, we'll go before there are any more explosions from Angela's id. Well, look at Tony in his college. Yes, exactly. You probably learned that in psychology. Yeah, id. So Sam says, okay, I'll be home at midnight. He says 11. She says, all right, 1130. He says 11. She says, okay, 11.15. He says 11. (laughs) She's like, okay, 11. But that's my final offer. And he's like, oh, you drive a hard bargain. Mm -hmm. And then she leaves. And then he tells... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, because I know what you're going to say. Well, and then Jonathan's mixing the chili like at about 100 miles an hour. Yeah, because Tony yells at him. Right. He's like, stir. I know. (laughs) It's going so crazy. (laughs) 
Because <laughs> he's trying to keep up. Yeah, he no, wants to be John. like Tony so bad, but he's always going to be like Angela. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, stop. Yeah. Why? Every time. I know. Anytime. Miles' new thing is he waits for us to do a podcast yeah. before he starts screaming uh, yeah. or when we go to bed. Exactly. Or the middle of the night for no reason. Right. We don't not re- we're not really sure what's going on with him. <laughs> And he's eating our dog's food. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that in there. We discovered oh, he's going to be so embarrassed. Yeah. He is. We discovered that. Our dog, we noticed our the dog food was going down food. a lot in the bowl, and our dog's never been that big of an eater. And today... Man, he's so hungry. I know. My God, he's really got an appetite lately. And today I realized I caught the cat eating the dog food. So oh. now... And we've always had the cat food up high because normally your dog, dog tries to eat the cat food. The cat food. Yeah, so oh, no, I didn't... The opposite problem, the cat's eating the dog food. Yes. So that's where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to feed the dog separately now. Oh, no. Okay, nobody cares. Anyway, we do. We digress. <laughs> now we're at this high school party, and we're going to meet another new friend of Sam's that we've never seen before and we'll never see again. So I think this girl's name is Nancy. She's standing mm. there with Bonnie, and then another girl who probably had to fill in because they could no longer get the actress who played Julia. And they're, so that's the new girl. Yeah. Right. Or they and they also couldn't get the actress who played Julia the last time. They couldn't get Julia, I guess. So what's this one's name? Sarah. No. No, I think this girl's name is Nancy, but we don't Nancy. know it yet. Okay. Nancy. Um, and let then me see here. It's Bonnie, of course. Yeah, Nancy. Her name is Tanya Fenmore, and oh, okay. I looked her up, and I think that one that we would know her from one show a little bit. Oh, really? And what was it? Life Goes On. She's in seven episodes of Life Goes On. So still nothing like a main character, but her face does look recognizable. What was Life Goes On? Who was in that? Oh, that was Corky, I think. And um, the mother is somebody famous. It was I mean, the I son totally who had Down syndrome. Show, but I don't. That's what's weird. Like, I'm trying to... Yeah, yeah. Hang on. The name is familiar. Kelly Martin played the sister. Chris Burke played Corky, and he has Down syndrome. Patty Lapone is the mother. Okay. Yeah, you remember. If I you saw... I feel like I remember the theme song more than I remember the show. Yeah, you probably saw a few episodes of it, but you would have been a little older, so you might not have been... Does Corky get married? There's um, like a let's, wedding photo. Let's I guess not. so. <laughs> Maybe that's our next podcast. That's for another How many time. seasons is this? I don't even know. Okay. Um... So yeah, so she has a recognizable face to me, but she also was in quite a few 80s shows, an episode okay. of Family's t- Family Ties. It's funny that you say that because I thought she looked familiar, but I just thought maybe whatever. She yeah. Just, you know. Family Ties, New Heart, Trapper okay. John M.D., Punky Brewster, The Wonder Years, My Two okay. Dads. I would have watched a lot of those. Yeah, shows. and then she was in seven episodes of Life Goes On. Okay, so they are at the party. They are standing off to the side and they're eating chips. And as they're doing that, Samantha says, look at Megan, Sarah, and so-and-so just standing over there eating chips, waiting for some guy to, to come talk to them. And then they realize that that's exactly how what pathetic. they're doing. <laughs> yeah, how pathetic. So they put the bowl of chips down and they're like, okay, we should do something else. So Nancy finds a bucket of beers. And yeah. she's like, ooh, look, here, beers. So she hands it out and she's like, here, have one. Samantha takes one and she's like, I don't like the taste of it. And Nancy's like, well, just hold it because you'll look cool. So they start walking around holding their beers. None of them have opened them at this point. And a couple of cute guys walk by. So Nancy wants to follow them. And Sam says, no, 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 don't follow them. The best way to get noticed is to ignore them. And Nancy's like, oh, come on, please. And then Sam says, well, it works for Mona. And they don't, they, I guess, even though we've never it's seen like Nancy before. It's like when Nia Button speaks, you know? <laughs> Mona speaks, yeah, everybody listens. Right? They're like, oh, yeah, That's if it. it works for Mona, <laughs> then you're right. Then we should just. Um, like even the. Samantha's friends know about Mona's. I know that's the thing. Like this is a friend actions. that we've never seen before, we'll never see again. She knows Mona, so they try to act casual, and these guys are just kind of wandering around behind them, and they're pretending to talk about current events and acting right. like they're they're smart. And then Bonnie. <laughs> well, no, no, hang on though, because <laughs> because they say just act casually, and then is it Nancy says? Frankly, I was surprised. At the Soviet pullout from Afghanistan. I think then, Sam says that. Oh, or yeah, whoever. And then the other one says, I'm surprised they got out by the deadline. Right. And it's kind of a reflection of what's going on. That is true. Just what just happened. The right. Soviet Union was pulling out of Afghanistan at the time in the 80s. Right. And, and, we had, and then they had a deadline. And we had a deadline recently when we had to pull out of 
Afghanistan. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Well, what's sad is that there are still wars going on, and no, and, and, no <laughs> and we've gotten nowhere blah, 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 right? in years and years and years. Oh. I know it is kind of sad, but you're I right. It's I a current up a event. Good, a terrible point. It is a current event that <laughs> is very similar today, with just a few words replaced. Right, but then what they're talking about, and then with Bonnie being my hero, <laughs> she starts talking about the dinner rolls. <laughs> Like they, she's like, do you believe they have dinner rolls? <laughs> and so, she picks up the whole plate. And I know, sits and she's down. digging. She's touched every single roll, <laughs> like every single one. Like, what's different about one from another? Stop. <laughs> so, but it works because the guys come bo- over. Has a plate of dinner rolls and a beer. Like that's the ultimate. That's awesome. <laughs> that is a night for me. That I'd be happy a night with for that. Me. I love it. Just sit, 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 seat me down somewhere with my beer and my dinner rolls. Where's and the carry gold? In a couple of hours. Oh yeah, that's need even some carry gold with those rolls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one guy comes over to Nancy. And he says, oh, hi. And she says, hi, I'm Nancy. And then he says, who's your friend? Which is kind of mean. Like, why didn't he go? Okay, well, I'll get there. But so right. then Nancy thinks he's talking about Samantha. And she's right. like, oh, okay, well, this is Samantha. Because Samantha's standing right next to her. But he's actually That's talking about Bonnie. That's who I would have been talking about at the time. Come on. Right? What's wrong with Bonnie and... I don't know. He likes, maybe he likes dinner rolls. <laughs> Nobody likes Bonnie. He's not going for Samantha. But I'm saying what's why he, he's going for Bonnie. Maybe he likes dinner rolls. Oh, I see what you're Maybe saying. Maybe he wanted one of the rolls, really. Oh, wait. Were you saying you, were, you would go after the dinner rolls no, or I'm you were going after that, Samantha? No, I'm saying before that I would say when I was young Kevin, <laughs> right. I would have Gone not after any of the other ones except Except Samantha. for Samantha. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, I, I see. I, yeah I, that was okay. my thing, but... And so why didn't he just go on the other side of the couch so he didn't have to go through two other girls to let them know he wasn't interested in them and was interested in dialogue on the television program? I know. So then he's like, oh, no, I mean her. And then she goes, are you kidding? As she's about to bite into a dinner roll. And he's like, you want to dance? And she says, sure. And Nancy's like, lose the dinner roll. And then then she puts it in her pocket. That's the best. Still my hero. Yes. (laughs) She's got a beer and still have one dinner roll. (laughs) <laughs> like there's great. no reason to put that back or lose it i'm gonna take it with I'm me i'm putting this dinner all in my pocket yeah so they go off to dance and then nancy's like wow she's really choosy and sam's like oh come on you're just jealous and nancy's like no nah, i could you know i can get any guy i want i just want to make sure that i can have a conversation with someone right. before so i go off make sure and i dance. can carry on a conversation yeah and then so, some guy comes up in a letterman's jacket yes and all he says is Hey, and she says, hey, yourself, cowboy, let's dance. And she takes him off and goes dancing. So now Samantha is left sitting all by herself. On the weird leather couch. Yeah. Um, Do I want to talk about any of these other actors here? No, because I barely can tell who they are in the list. You know what? This may have been a college party. I don't think so. Because Because he comes up and says, Samantha... Maselli, sophomore. Fairfield High School. No, he says Fairfield High School. And then she says, oh, hi. I don't, I mean. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it was like a. But this and is maybe Tim, like and this mix. is who she's talking about earlier. Right, but who's to say he wasn't a high, uh, college. Yeah, I guess so. But maybe that, maybe it was an, uh, and I used to, when I was in high school, this would happen a lot in my area because within probably a 10 mile radius, there were three high schools. You'd have a lot of mixed high school parties. Oh, really? Yeah, we had a lot of that going on. Oh, we had none Oh, of that. I had like I mean, three, no, literally, literally three bit. high schools. I want, I'm just guessing, I want to say 10 mile radius, not as it was probably wasn't even that there were three high schools and, and interesting. So I feel like there were a lot of, we, I would always go, Hey, there's a party, somebody from Bloomingdale, which was one of the high schools holding it, or there was Brandon high school and there was Sefner, which was my school. So I feel like there was a lot of, inter- okay. Yeah. I, I can see that. Maybe. I, I, it was not like there was one other high school near where we were, but it was pretty far and mm. they were kind of the rivals. So I don't really know that much. Yeah, ours to... were all like rivals, but I think it was friendly rivalry. Yeah. Well, but the other kids wearing like a Letterman jacket. I can't tell. Well, the Letterman jacket would be like high, would be college. Well, I guess no, it could be yeah, either one. High I guess school. it could be either. Yeah, you're right. But they were probably yeah. like seniors or like older guys yeah. at least. Well, that's tr- That's true. So now this guy comes up to the couch, and this is Tim, which we, we're going to realize in a second. And he says, Samantha Maselli, sophomore, right? Fairfield High. And she's like, oh, yeah. How did you know that? And he says, well, I just asked everyone at the party who the prettiest girl in the room was. Mm. And they said smooth. it was you. Yeah, smooth line there. And then she says, yes, yeah, she says, smooth line, Tim. And he's like, oh, well, how did you know my name was Tim? And she's like, oh, you look like a Tim. And he says, smooth one, Sam. Mm. Okay, now this actor, his name 
is Philip Linton. Linton, and he played mm. Tim. And unfortunately, he passed away in 1992, oh, only a few years later from AIDS. Oh no! I know, oh. very sad. It's terrible. This is the second time because the guy in um, First Date, the comedian, that's also what he passed away yes, from. Yes, exactly. But that's this right. is, you know, early 90s. I think that was when it, we were really losing a lot of people. Yeah, well, AIDS was like kind of running yeah. ramp. Yeah, you're right. So, but, and there obviously wasn't as many medical interventions as we have now. So, yeah, just awful. 28 years old. Wow. So he sits down and he says, you know, how's your beer? And she's like, oh, I don't, I don't really like the taste. She had set her beer down. It still has the cap on it. She's like, I don't really like the taste of it. And he's like, oh, me either. And then he's like, he pulls another beer out of his well, pocket. Well, he's like, it's light. That's a light beer, right? Yeah. So, so he's assuming that she doesn't like light beers. Right. He's assuming she has a more sophisticated beer palate. Right. And then being <laughs> the fancy fellow that he is, he pulls a beer out of his pocket. <laughs> And then puts it on the table, which again yeah. makes him. He's also my hero too. <laughs> he's got a beer and he's got one in his pocket. <laughs> Look, there's also fruit on the table. Yeah, well, you never know. Is that a chocolate cake? Uh, I don't. I don't where on the coffee table there. I don't see a chocolate cake. I see fruit. Maybe some chips. What's the shiny thing? Like it looks like a bunt cake. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I just I just see cake it's places. Like a candy dish or something. Oh, okay. So Samantha does start drinking the beer now. And she's like, hmm, oh yeah, this is much better. Thank you. (laughs) And so now Nancy and her guy come out, Bonnie and her guy come out, and they're all drinking. And they kind of do a cheers and then continue on with the party. So we don't know how many beers Sam has here. Mm, I know, we don't. But like, honestly, at her age, it could have just been two. Like, I think if I would have had two beers at this age, I would have been in pretty bad shape. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I could see at that. least not feeling well. It yeah, took me a long time to and then you're at a party and you're drinking. It's a different it's yes. A different... Even in college, if I had like I was, uh, I mean, a, a total lightweight and a nerd. But if I had like two or three beers, I would be up with a upset stomach for at least half the night. <laughs> a couple after. hours. <laughs> yeah, I never, I've never once ever thrown up from drinking, but I would get like an upset stomach. Really? So I I've so never. Right told me that once uh so because first of all i have a huge phobia of (laughs) throwing up in the first place so i'm not going to do something that's going to make me throw up even more sure so now that it's later that night they're walking up to the house it's bonnie and samantha okay i feel like the antenna tv version that you have is going to kind of gloss over this but they they spell it out better in the roku channel one which is that Bonnie and Sam walked to the party and walked home. I feel like there's a piece missing in the antenna TV part. They do. It does come up. Does Angela say it to her in the bathroom? No, but wait a minute. There is somewhere where it comes up later that they walked. Oh, okay. So maybe they did. I think when Tony's scolding her, he mentions about driving. Yes, he does do that. I think it comes up about that they walked back and forth to the party. Okay, okay. So I actually knew about that. Okay, good. Because I felt like they had glossed over that. I yeah. thought I had missed it in the antenna yeah, anyway. TV version, but here they definitely have it. So they're walking up to the house, and Samantha is singing 88 bottles of beer on the wall, which right. really starts off as 99. 99. So she's already saying 11 bottles to right. poor Bonnie. Poor Bonnie. Now, for some reason, Bonnie either has a higher tolerance or... Or she, or she ate eight dinner rolls <laughs> and just absorbed all the alcohol. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't know. She has all those dinner rolls in her pocket no, really paid off. She's chowing down on dinner rolls Because she night. seems fine. And Samantha she opted for is the drunk. dinner rolls rather than yeah. the heavy beers. <laughs> so when she's down, Bonnie's like, are you okay? She's like, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. And Bonnie's like, I don't know that you're fine. I know. Drunk people are so annoying. They're so now fine. Sam sits down on the ground and she's like, I'm not getting up until you believe me that I'm fine. And Bonnie's like, okay, fine. You're fine. Stand right. up. She's had enough. And when she pulls her back up, she's like, oh, man, my head is spinning. And then she turns around and looks inside. And she can see her dad is sitting on the couch doing homework. And she's like, I can't go in there. I can't face him. He's going to know. And Bonnie's like, he's not going to know. You just quietly go upstairs. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, no. He knows. He always knows. She's like, one of the, he, one of the parents probably called him. Or one of the kids stopped by from the party and told him all the ridiculous stuff. Or he had me followed. And she says, he's been having me followed for years. Also insane. Yes, but 
I could see Tony doing that. And you remember the episode where she goes to get the Beastie Boy tickets and he pays the falafel guy to keep it on. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam may be drunk, but I don't know that she's that far off on that one. And Bonnie's like, okay, just go inside and let's get upstairs. Sam says, how do I look? Bonnie says, better than you smell. So she's like, here, take this breath mint. And Sam says, it's a candy mint. And she's like, it's a breath mint. And Sam says, it's a candy mint. And then Bonnie says, it's two mints in one. And she shoves it in her mouth. Did you end up looking up that commercial? Yeah, I, I think it's a Certs commercial. Okay. The two mints in one. Yeah, two, two, two mints in one, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a Certs commercial where, because I guess the argument is, it tastes like candy, but it's still a breath mint. So I think um, it was a cert. Yeah, it was certs. Now, when they Remember come in. Remember certs? They still make certs. I think they do. Yeah. But that when was they their come in the front door, I don't know if you can see this on yours, but it looks like they're wearing colored socks with black flats, both of them. Mm. So that must have been a look. I mean, that's, mm, that's possibly. what I can tell, unless there's some kind of strange looking boots. Oh, very interesting. So Tony's sitting oh, there. I see, yeah. You see? Yeah. He's sitting there doing his homework, and they come in. Hi, Mr. Maselli. Hi, Dad. And he's like, hi, girls. And he's kind of only barely paying attention to them because he's trying to study. Mm -hmm. So they start to head upstairs. And he's like, hang on. How was the party? And then they're like, oh, it was fine. Thanks. And they try to go a little higher. And he's like, hang on. Do you want an omelet or French toast tomorrow for breakfast? See, and I immediately thought at this point, being the fact that I don't see a lot of these episodes, or I, I haven't seen a lot of the, you know, the recent episodes that we've been watching and right. it only gets worse from here. Yeah. For me remembering these episodes. I, I thought that Tony already knew she was drunk. Oh, really? Yeah, because he was just like, what do you, you know, oh. what kind of food do you want? Because usually the whole thing, I mean, oh, I think right. it's more of a hangover thing. you want to say something thing, gross but, when you right. think that they're, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. No, he has no idea yet. Well, yeah, no, I realize that. But then... <laughs> and I have other questions here on this next scene. Okay, hang on. So he's like, do you want an omelet or French toast for breakfast? And Bonnie, our hero, she's like, ooh, get the omelet. I know. Except Bonnie. for the fact that I would go for the French toast. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, wouldn't you? I mean, I would go for an omelet. Omelets are awesome. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think I might try to make an omelet this weekend because that sounds so good. It's been a while since I made an omelet. Yeah. Um, no, I would actually go for the omelet over the French toast. But I know you would like the French toast. Yes, but if you have an upset stomach, you're going to want to go with the French toast of course. the next morning. Yeah, the omelet's the, not a good You're going to want the carbs, yeah. But Samantha's not thinking about that. No, Samantha's trying not to throw up at this point now. Right. So she's like, oh, it's okay. And then she goes running upstairs. Okay, wait a minute. No, I just got a better look at these shoes. Okay. They're actually like sneakers that are a color and then like a little black tip on them. I think. Oh. oh, no, wait, hang on, hang on. Okay, Sam's, Sam is wearing colored socks with flats. Bonnie is wearing sneakers that are colored with like a black toe. Oh. So that's why they kind of looked similar, but they're actually different okay. shoes. I'm sure everybody was very, <laughs> well, <laughs> very watching. much wanted to know that. <laughs> so they go upstairs and as they're going upstairs, Tony's like, in by 11, good kid. Yeah, good kid. So they go straight for the bathroom. And Sam starts banging on the door because it's locked. And she's like, come on, come on. And Jonathan opens it and he's got toothpaste all over his mouth, which would make me throw up immediately. He's holding his toothbrush in his hand and his little pajamas. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, wait your turn. And then he sees Sam and he's like, oh, Sam, you look green. So she grabs him, throws him out of the way, right. goes into the bathroom and slams the door. Okay, so what time? Or I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. Not what time. We know what time it is. How old is Jonathan here? 12. Okay, he's up at 11 o'clock at night brushing his teeth. Yeah, but it's like a Friday or something. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Are our children going to be up at 11 o'clock on a Friday? Our children are during the summer. I know, but things, you know, once... Yeah, we... Right, right, right. Yeah, I feel like it's a weekend and he's 12. It and is, plus, probably night. nobody was paying attention. That, right? They were doing their own thing. He was okay. doing his own thing. All right. <laughs> but yes, I mean, I know we try to get our kids into into at least their rooms that's true earlier but i could see he does have two when i was 12 years old during the summer i think i was sitting up until like four o'clock in the morning oh, okay. watching tv by myself oh. and mm. then i would just eventually fall asleep wherever or go finally go to bed not me and sleep most of the day the next day i mean i know it's not summer here but at least it's a weekend night but yeah it probably is late for him to be brushing his teeth at this point but it's the 80s we could do anything we wanted back then true 
So Angela comes running. He, Jonathan yells for his mother. Angela comes running out. He still has toothpaste on his mouth, which is grossing me out. And Jonathan says, Sam's sick. And Bonnie's like, no, 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 she's fine. And so Angela starts banging on the door. And she's like, honey, are you okay? And she hears Sam kind of make like a <laughs> noise. I know. Like she immediately hears her puking, but then... She busts in right. and she's on the she's, tub all of a sudden, really fast. <laughs> maybe she, she threw up in like the tub. She wouldn't still be like over the toilet, right? Finishing up, or maybe it was just a dry heave. Oh. So I love this scene though between Angela and Samantha. So she comes in and now she's the first one that's seeing, realizing that she's drunk, mm. and she's like, "What's wrong?" And Sam says, "I think I'm car sick." And Angela says, "You walked to the party." That's where it is. Okay, so you do have that part. That's okay, that's where the part I didn't. I yes. thought you didn't have. No, no, no. That is on this. Okay. She said you walk to the you party. You walk to the party. And she's like, then I think I'm walk sick. And Angela gets a whiff of her breath, which smells like beer and mm. maybe throw up at this point, mm. and says, no, I don't think so. And she asks her, have you been drinking? And Bonnie says, just a couple of diet beers. And then Jonathan goes running. Mm, diet beers. Yeah. So Angela's like, oh, Sam. And she goes and gets a washcloth to try to like, wet it and put it on her head i don't know what that's gonna do but But that's what people on tv do when other people don't feel well they don't know what to do you wet a washcloth and you put it on their head and sam's like angela i'm fine just please do not tell my dad but angela's like i this is not i can't i can't keep this from him and she's absolutely right like to ask angela to keep this from her dad is way too much right and then what happens then tony would be so mad if they hid the fact that sam was drunk but it doesn't even matter because once Angela says, this is not something that I can keep from him, you hear Jonathan scream off screen, Tony, Sam's drunk. I know, like immediately. <laughs> and Angela's just like, well, there you go. So she's pressing the washcloth to Sam's face when Tony comes running up the stairs. And then we get a, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> I know, always. And she looks away all embarrassed and they fade to black. Yep. The next day... The chili is still being cooked. <laughs> I know. I didn't understand that. Yeah, like it's not a slow cooker. So did they just leave that chili in the pot on the stove overnight? Oh. We already know that Tony has questionable kitchen habits, but I'm that's going too far. Like I don't think you can really leave chili for 24 hours, can you? I don't know. I don't know Maybe much it's about chili. Low heat. I guess so. So he just left a all burner going all night. Long. Now, also speaking of Tony's questionable kitchen habits, he takes the spoon out of the chili, licks it, puts it back in the chili. (laughs) Why does this happen so often in this show? (laughs) And says it needs more time or more uh, more chili pepper. So uh, Jonathan's like, all right, you got it. And he goes to dump some more sprinkles in and the lid falls off. And the panic on his face. (laughs) And a bunch dumps in and the lid is still inside the chili pot. I know. (laughs) And he's like, all right, well, that should be about do it. And he throws the lid on it and goes hauling ass out of the kitchen. Meanwhile, though, the... Like, never mind that, like, people are going to be eating melted plastic. Right. (laughs) Like, Tony's going to find that plastic in there. I hope so. I hope he does. There's now no longer a lid on the chili pepper here, but he doesn't care. He just needs to get out of there. So he goes running out, and then Tony tells Mona, as soon as it's done, I'll dish up a bowl. And Mona's excited. She says, because there are guys coming over today to watch a fight. She says, men tending to my every need. It's the way God meant it to be. Yeah, that's a very Mona thing to say. So uh, Angela comes in, and she says, Sam is up and getting dressed. And Tony's like, oh, great. The princess arises at 2 o'clock. That's pretty. That's a late. Well, she's that's having a, a hard time down there. She is, yeah. And Angela's like, okay, about last night. And Tony's like, I don't want to hear it. Do not tell me that I was too hard on her. And she's like, I wasn't going to say that because I'm with you all the way on this one. And he's like, oh, really? Okay, good. He says, you know, I meant it when I told her she was irresponsible and stupid. And Angela says it was very powerful. He says, mm. thank you. She says it would have been even more powerful if she had been conscious. <laughs> so Sam passed out somewhere oh, during yeah. that conversation. Yeah, well, so, well um, Tony was just going to town. Right. Yeah, yelling, <laughs> yelling at, her. at her. So Tony says he's going to go back up there and he'll say it all over again and make sure she hears it. Now, Mona, <laughs> this is a great Mona moment. Oh, my she God. Says, this made me laugh so hard. <laughs> she says, Tony, don't be too hard on her. I remember the first time Angela got drunk. She got a bottle of whiskey, 
and she went behind the shed with Jeb. <laughs> and then I she kind of pauses. Her. Yeah, it, must, it has to, it, maybe it really is the, mm-hmm. and then she says, no, that was an episode of the Waltons. <laughs> And Angela just looks at her like she's crazy. I know, because it is. It's insane. <laughs> and Mona's like, no, no. No, that wasn't Angela. That was John Boy. I know. I had no, I have no way of knowing if that's a real episode of The Wall. I don't know either. And Angela's like, mother? And Mona's like, don't worry, Angela. John Boy never drank again. Mm-hmm. Just like so <laughs> then there's a, the doorbell rings and she's like, all right, that must be the guys. I'll go get it. So she leaves the kitchen and Angela's like, you know, Tony, I, I, I do understand what Mona, what Mother's trying to say. And he says that she needs to be put in a home. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's awful. And she's like, no. She's just saying that we shouldn't overreact because John Boy drank and he had a hangover. And then he understood that he shouldn't do it anymore. And right. it was fine. Okay. Right. But, Sam's, but Tony says Sam's going to get a whooping from Pa. And then he leaves. So now out in the living room, Mona opens up the front door to let these guys in. And they're all, hello. And she says, yo, guys. And Tony comes out and says, yo, guys. And they all high five. And then Angela says, yo, guys. And they all say, hello, Mrs. Bauer. (laughs) Very proper with her. (laughs) Now, there's a new guy here that we've never met before. But I noticed that the actor, hang on, the actor named Vinny, where'd he go? Vinny. Vinny Agirio is his name. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, wrong, so I'm sorry. Now, the very first episode he was in was called Tony for President, but he's just listed as man. Mm. So he was, um, I'm, I'm guessing that means he was one of the people in the audience of the PTA meeting. So whether or not he was playing Vinny, we have no idea. So either this is some guy that Tony met there that he's now friends with, or it's just an actor playing that part and then also the part of Vinny from Brooklyn. Then... Vinny's also in this episode, Boozing Buddies, and then he's in a 1992 episode, which is titled, Who's the Boss? That's interesting. He tells the guys that the chili today has been made by no one other than Johnny, and he points to Jonathan. Oh, boy. Yeah. Pressure's on. So then Tiny's like, well, it better be good. And he looks at Jonathan, and Jonathan looks terrified. (laughs) So the guys start betting on what's going to happen in this fight. They're over to watch a fight, apparently. Right. And they put some money in, and then Mona wants to put some money in, and they're like, we're not taking money from a lady. And she says, if you're going to walk the wa- talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Okay. And then she reaches into her bra and pulls out a 20, and she throws it down. And she says, there's more where that came from. And Tiny says, I'm in. And she says, you wish. So now uh, Tiny gets up and Samantha comes down the stairs just then. She's very nicely dressed and put together for someone who slept until two because they had a hangover. Her <laughs> hair is all done. That's she a has like, a cute little sweat sweater set on and she even has shoes on. Why do people on sitcoms always wear shoes in their house? I never understand that. And they always put shoes on the bed and the furniture too. Actually, just TV is, in general does that. This is me out. Okay, so... They're like, oh, Sam, you look so grown up. And Tiny says, not too old for noogie patrol. And then he grabs her and starts giving her a noogie on her head, which is the worst thing that you want when you have a hangover. So she goes into the kitchen where Tony and Angela were already in the kitchen because Angela was getting some stuff for the party. Tony's working on the chili. And when Angela sees Sam come in, she knows that he wants to be alone with her. So she's like, oh, I, I, I'll just I'll just go. And she goes running out of the kitchen. So Sam sits down and he asks her, how do you feel? She says, I feel awful. And I just got the Nuggie Patrol. <laughs> and he says, good. And she's like, I'm sorry. And he At says, least he says good. Yeah. <laughs> she says, sorry. And then he's like, Sam, 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 Sam. I, I don't want to hear sorry. I'm real mad. You're grounded for a month. And he's like, what, what were you thinking? And she says, I don't know. And he's like, you don't know? And he's like, okay, well, you're not going to see any of those kids anymore. You're not going to any more of those parties. And yep. Sam's like, you know, everybody was drinking. What was I supposed to do? I don't think you have this part here. No, I think I do. Hang on. You're missing this. There's like a little part in here that you're missing where oh, maybe. Um, she says everybody was drinking. And he's like, oh, big deal. So everybody was drinking. And then he says, if everyone was going to, if everyone, no, no, that. If everyone was going to jump off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? Classic Tony analogy. I know. 
And then he says, and if everybody was going to go get a tattoo, would you get a tattoo? And his tattoo was kind of peeking out of his shirt. Right. And then he like looks down at it and he's like, forget the last one. And I think that the story of that tattoo on Tony Danza was that he was hanging out with some people and he got drunk and got a tattoo. Oh. So I think that's not only Tony Maselli, but Tony Danza there talking a little bit. So then Sam says, I was at a party. And then I think this is where this picks back up. I was at a party. What was I supposed to do? And he's like, you should have just had milk because it does a body, body good. But it's like, it's funny because, and she says to him, like, you don't understand. And he's like, there's no understanding. But Tony was doing all this stuff when he was her age also. Yeah, that's true. And there were, so there was a reason why I wanted, it's interesting to see how this is handled on a show in the 80s. And I think that you would, I feel like it might be handled differently today. Not so much of like just no drinking. Right. Because... I don't know. The same thing with sex. I just feel like you can't tell kids not to do it because right, like, they're going do to do it. Right. There's going to be some kids that just aren't going to do it because they're too scared, like I would have been. But then there are going to be kids like one of our daughters that's not going to be too scared. Right. <laughs> so it's just... Then there was another reason why I wanted to check the date on this episode. And that is because there was also a very famous Growing Pains episode that dealt with drinking in a slightly different way where Carol sneaks out and goes with her boyfriend, Sandy to a party. And Sandy's actually played by Matthew Perry. And I remember that episode sticking in my head for like most of my, oh, I still remember it now. Like, I think even when Matthew Perry got on friends, I was like, that's the guy Sandy from growing pains. <laughs> right. Like it was like, <laughs> like it that stuck in my so head confused. that much. But the reason is because she goes out on a date with this guy. They go to a party where there's drinking and then I think on the way home from dropping her off or something, he gets into a car accident. And then she goes to the hospital, and it seems like he's going to be okay, and then he just dies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Oh, my gosh. So that's how they dealt with it. And I was trying to figure out if that was the same time or not as this Who's the Boss. But this Who's the Boss was actually before. So this episode aired in March of 1989, and the Growing Pains episode aired in April of 1989. So it was interesting that there were two shows that dealt with drinking at this time. Almost, I wonder if it was some sort of campaign, maybe, that they were doing for, I don't know, like Mothers Against Drunk Driving or something. Oh, yeah, maybe. Like, I don't know yeah. if it was a thing where the 80s shows were all dealing with it on, you know, certain yeah, nights. Because I think, I think both of, of those were ABC shows also. Um, as like part of a campaign or if it was just a coincidence that they both had these episodes. But I also think that like if you were to see this storyline on a TV show today, especially this next part coming up, which I think is all a little bit ridiculous, but I don't know so much if it would be dealt with today as like don't drink or if it would be dealt with more in the way of like be responsible and if right, you get yourself right, right. never get into a car, which he does touch on later in the episode. I want to teach our kids like... Just kind of hold the beer and pretend you're drinking it. Because beer doesn't taste good anyway. Nobody really wants to drink well, it. Yeah. I mean, it's an acquired taste. Yes. Did you think it tasted good the very first time you had it? No, I, I, I doubt it. Right, I yeah. I doubt it. So just drink a little tiny bit so that nobody knows you're not drinking that much. I did that for years. Okay, now, um, so Tony says, you don't need alcohol to have a good time. And uh -oh. just then... One of his friends comes in and says, Tony, do you want a beer? And he throws him a beer and Tony grabs it. And so Sam's looking at that beer, which is another odd storyline for here because we've seen Tony drink a handful of times this entire show. And now like suddenly he can't get through a day hanging out with his friends without drinking. But so he's like, OK, you know, I get it. I can drink and you can't. But there's a reason for that. And that's because we are responsible adults. And I agree with this. Like, this is not a comparison here at all. Yeah, right. Tony is an adult, and he's in his own house. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so it's not the same as an underage teenager drinking outside the house where they still now to get, <laughs> need to get themselves home and can get themselves into m m many more dangerous situations than just drinking. So I think this is kind of a silly storyline that they even waste here in this middle part. Tony says, as responsible adults, they know that they don't need beer to have a good time. And Sam's like, sure, Dad, whatever. So he's like, all right, oh, I have an idea. Then we're not going to drink today. So he goes out <laughs> into the living room to tell Tiny, Vinny, and Philly his idea of let's try to not have beer today. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. 
and Angela's like, I think that's a wonderful idea. Mm-hmm. Come on, mother. Come into the kitchen with me so we can get these guys some pink lemonade. <laughs> and they yeah, go off to the kitchen. Good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, come on. And Tony's... These guys are ready to watch some fighting, boxing, and, and drink some beer. You're right. You know? So he's like, okay, guys, what do you say? And they're just like all kind of looking... And they're like, no, we want beer. And he's like, listen, I'm trying to teach Sam a lesson here. He's like, she went out and she got drunk last night. None of them seem that phased by it, probably because I think they all have older kids. And the, and Tiny's like, oh, yeah, I remember when my kid got into drinking. And he's and Tony's like, oh, did he get drunk? And he's like, no, he knocked over a liquor store. Oh, God. Yeah. That's, that's way worse. <laughs> that's way worse, yeah. So now Angela that's... and Mona come out with the pink lemonade, and they hand it out, and they're all doing a big show in mm. front of Samantha as to how good this pink lemonade is. And Tony's like, oh, yeah, and there's who, added vitamins and who everything. Who whipped up the pink lemonade? I don't know. It had a bit of powder. No, there's no added vitamins. It's sugar right. and water yes. and pink whatever the pink flavoring is. And I'm sure that was just a powder. There's no way they just grind um, really like um, uh, juiced lemons yeah, right. and then added right. strawberry syrup. Yeah, come on. <laughs> There's no way. So T- Tiny actually says to Tony, I mean to Angela, can I have some chocolate milk? I know. And she's like, would you like a straw? And he says, yes, a bendy one. Oh, gosh. So is she goes five? to... Yeah, right. <laughs> So then Mona says, all right, well, I'll see y'all later. I'm going to watch the fight with Larry next door. And Vinny's like, "Why? who's Larry? You don't need Larry. You got three studs right here. Larry. And she opens up the front door and there is Larry. Wearing some sort of reindeer sweater? I'm not really yeah, sure what that is. there's a lot of things going on here Maybe with those Larry. those are elk? Yeah. So, yeah. The amazing thing about it is that it's one of those Christmas sweaters that would be like popular now. Yes, you know, absolutely. You, you wore that to a Christmas party, you'd be like, man, that's cool. It'd be a nice, ugly sweater. With a weird elk. Now, the jeans, not so much. So Larry is played by Dennis Hayden. Yeah. Which I remember him from uh, Die Hard. Really? Yes. Okay. I don't remember him, he has but he's a been big in a lot of stuff. Hard. Not, a, not a, a huge role, but he's the, um, he's the, um, uh, the front desk guy in Die Hard, like, when the bad guys come in and take over the building, he pretends like he's oh. running the front desk, but he's really a bad guy. Oh, okay. I think I actually do remember that guy yeah. now that you say that. That's the best way to put that. Now, just to put this in perspective, he's a Russian, he is one year younger than Tony Danza. So oh, okay. that's how old Mona's date is for the oh, okay. afternoon. Well, there you go. <laughs> is he still working today? 2018 was his last um, credit. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so... Wow, I didn't think, yeah. I, 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 and what was it? Like, was it anything No, it was a short. Oh. Yeah, uh, and then 2016 that. was a movie, A Journey to a Journey. Not I don't is. know. So I don't, I don't know that he's... Um, yeah, he's great in Die Hard. Super mainstream right now. Um, but like, yeah, he shows up and he has the tightest jeans ever. He does. We can see what religion he is, I think, pretty much through his jeans. <laughs> oh, that's right. I totally forgot. I yeah, know. it's like a marble party going yeah, on in it there. it is. It's like a sack of marbles. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know I what forget. is happening down there, but... <laughs> well, that's why Larry got invited over. I guess so. Yeah, yeah I guess. Mona. Yeah, sorry. Right. So Mona's gone. So now the guys don't have Mona to look at anymore, and yeah, they have pink lemonade. With. And Tony's like, all right, this let's just get ready. This party's going downhill. For- I know. So they start the getting ready for the fight, but before, there's a commercial. And of course, it's a beer commercial. And it's this like super cheesy fake beer commercial about how you just got home from... Putting are, the fifth face right. on Mount Rushmore, <laughs> right. and you need a man-sized beer, and so all the guys are just like sitting there salivating, and they're like, "Yeah, we really need a beer." So they should have just taken the beers out of the room completely, right? Exactly. But they're all still right there. So the guys grab a beer, and Tony's like, "Come on, guys, help me out here!" And they're like, "She's upstairs. She's not paying attention. We came here to watch the fight and have a good time." So they start watching the fight, and then Tony gets into the fight and then immediately reaches for his beer and opens it and completely forgets. Yep. So the doorbell rings, and when Angela comes back out in the living room, no one's drinking her pink lemonade. They're all drinking beer, and no one's going to get the door. So she's like, I guess I'll get the door. For the day, <laughs> An- Angela's like a, a housewife. She's not getting any respect here <laughs> from her housekeeper. Yeah, really. She pays to clean her house. So at the door is Nancy and Bonnie. They've come over to study span- uh, French. And then Samantha sees that Tony is drinking a beer. And he's like, oh, wait, I didn't even realize I was doing it. I just reached for it. just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And Sam goes upstairs, and he's like, oh, man. I-. So now upstairs, the girls are studying French. And they're, like, going over what 
how do you say mother and she says it how do you say father and then she says la jerk so nancy goes over and she's like oh i've got something to help with that and she has a bottle she's brought a bottle of champagne i know like, like- <laughs> What are you, like, you guys what are, are you rap stars. Like, what is happening here? Why are you just carrying around a bottle of I champagne? Know, like, for like teenagers to drink. Like, I'm yes. I'm rolling up with the champagne that needs to be the cork needs to be popped. Right. But like, what's funny is it's kind of just that thing of like teenagers will drink whatever they can exactly, find. Exactly. they get their hands right. on. Right. And That's so true. Nancy even says here, my parents were saving it for a special occasion, but it's just been collecting dust since their divorce. <laughs> That's kind of sad. I know oh, it no. is. And. Sam's like, I can't even well, look at that right now. It. Yeah. She, Sam's like, I can't look at that right now. And Nancy's like, oh, no, this is actually supposed to help if you, it's the hair of the dog that bit you. Mm. Yes, that is an old phrase. That's it's, a thing. Yeah. Now, that doesn't really work, though, does it? Uh, it depends. I think it depends. But yes, I think it actually does. Really? I just feel like carbs would work or something. Carbs I know, and I mean, water I think a combination Advil. of things. But, but like, you are way more seasoned in the uh, drinking yeah, department than yeah, I ever have I think been. that like sometimes if you don't feel right the next day after drinking a lot, like you can have a beer or two and be like, oh, I kind of feel right again. Oh, but it might just be like the pain. But it's not like a sick, a sick thing. It's just more like a feeling not right from drinking oh gotcha i don't know it's probably it's not a good thing no it's probably your road to alcoholism (laughs) (laughs) right exactly bonnie's all worried though she's like her dad is right downstairs and sam's like yeah he's downstairs drinking with all of his friends so i really don't care so then she grabs the bottle and she's gonna try to open it so she's trying to pop a champagne bottle that's not easy even if you've done it before so these three idiots trying to open this champagne it's not that hard either I know, but it's like, it's never clean or simple. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're going to get this everywhere. All you got to do once. is slowly twist it. Okay, again, you're way more seasoned than these <laughs> these three. So she's <laughs> turning the cork, trying to get it to go, and it's not. And then um, Nancy gets in there, and she tries, and then Tony comes to the door. So now they have right, to like hide and it. Right, like now it's already been worked a little right. bit. So now they're in trouble. So Sam goes and runs and throws it in her closet. They grab their books, and they pretend that they're just working on French. And so Tony's like, you know, I came in. I want to talk to Sam about something. And the girls are like, okay, well, we'll leave. And he's like, no, actually, I think this is good for you to hear as well. So he says, you know, when you came home drunk, I didn't want to hear any excuses. And maybe I needed to understand a little better of like what you did. Like, it's not fair for me to lecture you. And then I can't even do it myself about not drinking at all. He's in trouble. I know, but again, you're an adult and she's not. I know, not, I but... know, and that's where it should have been left off. You and I both know that, but, yeah. you know, exactly. And it's not like Tony's some guy that drinks all the time. Right. Like, every night she comes home, he's drinking right, a six-pack. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. I don't know. I mean, so, he's a good example of a moderate drinker. Right. And so I think... But he, you know, she can't hold him, but Just whatever. telling I guess her... we wouldn't have an episode. Exactly. Bonnie says, that's cool, Mr. Maselli. And he's like, no, no, I'm not done. So mm. she, she's like, oh. And then he says, you know, in a perfect world, like, you wouldn't be drinking. I wouldn't be telling you not to drink and then drinking myself. Like, but he's like, I just don't want you drinking. It's right. illegal and it's dangerous. Right. So I feel like maybe they're both learning lessons here because he's realizing the better way to talk to her about this because this is the speech he should have had in the beginning. Right. And but he was so yeah, mad. Right. And I guess we As haven't really. Father, right. Yeah. We haven't really had to deal with this yet. So right. we don't really know how. Um, we would react to it. But he says, you know, like, I get it. There's a lot of peer pressure, but you just, both of us need to not fall into that trap. Like, I shouldn't be worried about what my friends say about drinking, and you shouldn't be worried about what your friends say. Because, you know, it's illegal, and it's dangerous, and it's the choice is always yours. Right. And the girls in the background, especially Nancy, are trying to get Sam's attention. Because the champagne bottle is still it's like it's yeah pop. it's brewing in, the, in that closet and it's going to pop and then he says okay and he's like you know he goes to leave and they think that he's done and they're <laughs> get ready to go sh- uh, rescue the champagne bottle he's like no, no no hang on and he's like one more thing you just need to promise me that in case you are stupid and you do you do drink which i'll kill you that you don't get in you don't drive and you don't get into a car with anyone right. else who is driving which is really the best information here right. at, at all. <laughs> Wait, even though he threatens her friends. <laughs> yeah. Kill them. <laughs> right. Yeah, he says, don't get in a car with anybody else. That's why I wasn't sure that they had made it clear earlier that Bonnie didn't drive. But yeah, you're right. They did. Okay. I, did, I didn't. Re- I thought the antenna yeah, TV no, would. Yeah, they walked, I guess. Um, yeah. And he says, promise me you're not going to get in anybody else's car either. 
So finally he leaves, and Nancy's like, oh, that's so cool. Your dad said you can drink. I know. And then he comes back, and he's like, no, 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 no. no. That's not at all what I said. Right? He just wants Sam to be responsible, to use your own judgment, and to know that, and then he hears a pop. But he doesn't say anything about it. Yeah. And he's just like, he just like kind of looks I around. I want her to know that I trust her. Yeah. But I think I think deep down inside he knows. He knows that she's going to make the right decision here, or he knows he that knows that was with the pop. Oh knows, yeah, yeah. No, he knows what that but was. But I'm saying though, and he and he know right, and I think he knows that that she's going to make the right decision right. after the after the speech he just gave her. Yeah. And so the he, fact that they've been through several of these type of situations <laughs> right. in a couple of where days, he's yeah. kind of yelling at her or whatever. Yeah. So he leaves, and they're like, oh, man, that was close. So then Nancy goes and gets the bottle. So I guess it didn't pop everywhere in the closet, which is good. And no, Sam says... Because, and realistically, when you try to take it off slowly like that, and you wait a couple minutes, it just would pop, and it wouldn't oh. fly. Like okay, some people would, would take, pop anywhere. them right off. That's when it like kind of shoots everywhere, gotcha. but whatever. Because that would have been a mess if it got Right, no. Yeah, the way they did it, it, it made sense the way it went down. But Sam tells Nancy she doesn't want any. And then Nancy's like, what, are you never going to drink again? And she says, what about Greg's party? And then Sam's like, I'll deal with Greg's party when I get there. But right now I don't want it. And so then (laughs) the door opens and Tony throws, puts his hand in. And they put the champagne bottle in his hand. Right, which is awesome. Yeah. (laughs) And then we never see Nancy again. So I guess she was like, you're not drinking, then we're not friends. Yeah, Nancy, maybe Nancy's the partier. Who's the boss will be back in a moment. Stick around. In the tag, Tony is dishing out two bowls of chili. And Angela's sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. Jonathan (laughs) comes in and he's like, oh, what do the guys think? And Tony says, oh, you know what? We didn't even get a chance to have any because the fight only went for two rounds. Right, so that they didn't get a chance to taste the chili with the plastic lid. In it. <laughs> right. And Angela's Potential like, oh, more for lid. me. Right, yeah, she's all excited. So she has she, no idea. She takes a bite, and then they go to a montage of a house on fire, a volcano erupting, a bomb going off, <laughs> like everything hot and fiery. And then if you notice, when they come back to the shot of the two of them at the table, they've moved the bowl out of the way of Judith Light. Like it was right in front of her before where you would normally have right. a bowl of chili when you're going to eat it. Right. And then her head goes down on the table. Right. So yeah, how are you yeah. going to shoot that? Right. They, had to, they wouldn't want to put her face in the chili. Right. But they also put, I feel like there's some effect that made it speed up when she puts her head down. And that is the end That's of the episode. That's the end of the episode. All right. I do rating first this time. I gave this episode a seven. Okay. I thought it was solid. I mean, everybody had stuff to yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interesting. A lot happened. I th- you know, it's a hard storyline to deal with then and now. And it's hard for a sitcom to do it too. But I think they, they did a decent job with it. Uh, I got a little muddled in the middle, but I think really they wanted that so that Tony also learned a lesson here. But right. Yeah, it was it was entertaining. I liked it. Yeah, I agree. I give it a seven too. Uh, pretty much all for the same reasons you just gave. You know, there was some weirdness in the middle there, like... You know what? There's a difference in adults and children. And right. Adults have beers once in a while, and children don't. And you know, you basically you're not gonna have the buddies over and not have some beers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not gonna sit there and drink pink lemonade <laughs> to prove a point. So it's that's somebody else's problem. You know what I mean? That's like Tony's right. problem with his kid. I'm right, gonna sit right, here right. and drink my beer right. and have a good time if I want. I don't know. But yes, overall it was a and you know Jonathan had a part in it. You know, usually sometimes his parts feel forced into the episode just to have him in the episode but um this one didn't feel so forced you know he was kind of cooking the chili then he dropped a plastic lid in the chili and then just left right which made no sense and tony had to have found that lid i know but no it's never no no one ever ever spoke of it and then what you actually pointed out with the the chili in the end which i also want to point out there's no rice or any kind of pasta (laughs) involved (laughs) at least a sweet potato come on something just something you can't just yeah, you just sit there and eat chili straight I up, know. right? I, I guess mean, some I mean, I could. Do that maybe. I actually could, but you know, what I mean, it's nice with a little bit yeah. of rice. Yeah, and it cuts the heat. Too. Yeah, exactly. Who's the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. I for this episode, believe it or not, I actually picked Samantha. Oh, okay. Because even though I mean, like when she went to the party, I felt like she kind of like she had no intention of drinking. It wasn't like we're gonna go and get drunk. It just kind of happened, and she tried not to, and beer just kept getting pushed onto her in a way. You know what I mean? Like, she tried not to drink the, the beer finally when she sat down with Tim, 
And then Tim pulled a beer out of his pocket and said, drink this. There was a lot of peer pressure going on. Yeah. But like in the end of the episode, um, even though, uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. What's her name brought over the bottle of Nancy champagne, Nancy. Um, good old Nancy. She knew not to, I mean, yes, Tony gave her a little bit of a speech, which, but I couldn't give Tony the, I couldn't make Tony the boss just because of this sh- debacle that happened in the living room with the drinking and the no drinking and the pink lemonade and all that i feel like tony lost control of yeah, the situation yeah. um but i felt like she she still knew right from wrong and and you know you can obviously tell when tony like kind of gives her that ultimatum upstairs you know she's never gonna betray him again and, right um but i mean i feel i feel like we have that in reality her, though but, she would totally drink again oh yes that's well yeah that's the <laughs> truth but and i'm i'm just dealing with this episode <laughs> So in this episode, I get, I would say Samantha's the boss. All right. Well, I, that's not who I chose. Okay. And if I can't go with Larry and his sack of marbles, I'm I went Larry. with Tony and Tony. Yeah, but really? only because he comes around at the end and realizes that he was kind of going about this the wrong way. Okay. And but then, then he corrects it. All then right. Corrects I can see it, that. I, and then yeah. Yeah. Okay. Goes about it the right way. All right. And does make an impact instead of just saying do as I say not as i do yeah he lays it out to her in a better way okay i don't know it was thin but yeah i mean i'll tell you it was hard i I mean i don't know much about larry so i can't i have no i i think he had a good amount of influence on this episode but (laughs) i can't tell yeah okay so So you can reach us at who's the boss instagram on who's the boss podcast on instagram or who's the boss pod one on twitter Go to the Who's the Boss podcast page on Facebook or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast and there you can leave us a voice message. Now the next episode we are going to cover is, oh, it's a Jonathan episode. Oh. It's called Heather Can Wait. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty funny one. Oh, I can't wait. It's, it's good. Um, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. All right. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother, and your your sister or brother. Maybe have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.